Hi, my name is Nevin with Pitsco Education, and today we're going to be building a ray catcher. To build a ray catcher, you're going to need the following materials. Two balsa wood sheets, two alligator clips, two rear wheels, two front wheels, two wide rubber bands, four nylon spacers, two steel axles, a plastic gear font, two number 14 rubber bands, a motor, a pencil, a ruler, sandpaper, a hobby knife, soldering iron and solder, and a cool melt glue gun. Now that we've gathered all of our materials, let's start building a ray catcher. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start making our chassis. So take a sheet of balsa wood, and the sheet of balsa wood is 10 and a half inches long. So we're going to draw a line right down the middle of it that is five and one fourth inch. After you've drawn your line that's five and one fourth inch through the chassis, flip it to the other side, and from one end of the chassis, draw a line that is three-fourths of an inch. On the same end that you drew the three-fourths of an inch line, you're going to make a rectangle that is one inch from the top, and that is five-eighths by one and one-half inch. So I'm just going to draw the lines on here to make my rectangle. So I've made one one and one-half inch line. Now I'm going to make a five-eighths line. Then make the other side. After you've drawn your line and rectangle on one end of the chassis, you're going to draw a line that is two and a half inches from the other end. After you've drawn both your lines, then you're going to cut out the rectangle you made with the hobby knife. After you cut it out, you might want to take some sandpaper and smooth the edges out a little bit. Now we're going to take the other balsa sheet and we're going to draw a one and one eighth line from one end of the sheet. Measure it out and make sure that you're paying attention to the notches when you're measuring all this out. So one one eighth would be here. Draw a little line, and then just draw along the line you made for the length of the piece of wood. After you've made that line, take the hobby knife and cut it out. After you cut it out, you might want to sand it on each side to make sure that it's even on each side. Now we're going to take that one and one eighth balsa piece that we cut off and glue it to the other balsa sheet. You're going to take a bead of glue and run it right along the edge. and then press this down on the middle line that you drew in to the other sheet of balsa. Just hold it there until it cools. And you know, make sure that you're trying to have it straight up and down, perpendicular with the other balsa sheet. After you've held it there for a little bit, then you're going to want to draw a line of glue on each side or of the support member. And after you're done gluing the support panel to the chassis, we're ready for the next step. Now we're going to move on to assembling the axles. This can be a kind of tricky part in the build process, 
what you wanna make sure that you do is first deburr your axles. So just take the sandpaper, you wanna sandpaper the ends of this so they slide right into the gears. After you've deburred one of the axles, it should feel pretty smooth on the edges. It shouldn't feel sharp, really. After you've done one, do the other. After you've deburred the axles, look at your gear font. And with the kit comes a gear font kind of identification sheet. And locate gear font I. You're going to just want to pop that one off the gear font because we're going to be putting this on our axle. If you have excess plastic after you've popped it off the gear font, just take the hobby knife and kind of trim the edge because you want all the gears to fit as snugly as possible. Now we're going to do our rear axle assembly. You're going to take the gear that you just took off the gear font and slide it in to one of the axles. You're going to want to slide it about one and seven eighths from one end and so after sliding it down, you're gonna to need to measure it. After you've slid the gear onto the axle, it should be one and seven eighths from one end and three and three eighths from the other end. Next, take two nylon spacers and put one on each end of the axle. And then you're just going to take one of the rear wheels and force the axle onto it. You wanna push this into there until it's flush with the other side. After you put one of the rear wheels on, slide the other one on. After you've slid your tires on, take one of the wide rubber bands and put it over the tire. So this will give the tire traction when the ray catcher starts moving. That's the rear axle assembly. Now we're going to move to the front axle assembly. This is a lot easier. Just take one of the front tires, slide the axle in, push down until it's flush with the other side, and then you take two nylon spacers and you slide it in on the free end. And then you just place the other wheel on the other side. And now you have your front and rear axle assembly. Now we're going to begin gluing the axle assemblies to our chassis. We're gonna start with the rear axle assembly because it's the difficult one. So take the rear axle assembly and line it up along the line that you drew and make sure that the gear is in the middle of the axle assembly and that the spacers are about 1 16th of an inch from each wheel so that the gear doesn't have that much room to slide around in there. And then, you need a friend or C-clamps to hold the axle assembly in place while you put glue. After we've glued the rear axle assembly, we're going to glue the front axle assembly. You want to place it along the line near the front and make sure that the nylon spacers are equidistant from each wheel. And then you have your friend hold it in place. And you glue again. Then you just hold it in place until the glue cools. After your glue dries, you are done attaching your axles to the chassis. Now we're going to attach a motor to our chassis. The first thing you need to do is take the gear F off of the gear font. So just twist that off and make sure you remove any excess plastic from the motor. Then you're going to attach it to the gear shaft on the motor. You want to push it onto it, but give it enough space that it's not touching the motor. Then you're going to take your cool melt glue gun and next to the axle on your chassis, you're just going to make a rectangle of glue next to it. And after you place this glue down, you're going to put the motor on the glue with the vent side facing up. When you place the motor onto the chassis, make sure that the gears mesh into each other. 
After you push the motor onto the chassis, run some more lines of glue around it just to make sure that it's on there well. Now that we've attached the motor to the chassis, we can move on to our next step, which is making the motor connections. Now we're going to make our motor connections. So to do that, we need to take the solar panel and the wires coming from it, and you need to solder the alligator clips to it. After you've connected the alligator clips to the solar panel wires, take your glue gun and just put a dab of glue over the connection to kind of protect it. It's also a good idea that after you've made your motor connections, to take the solar panel and the chassis outside and connect it to the motor to make sure everything runs correctly. Now we're going to do our final assembly. The first thing we need to do is take the glue gun and run a line of glue along the very front end of our chassis. Then you're going to run another line of glue across the front of the chassis, kind of giving your chassis a little bit of a bumper. And then you want to wait for that to cool also. After the glue is cooled, you want to position your solar panel so that the front of it rests along the glue and the middle of it is along that support panel in the middle of your chassis. When you have it positioned right, it just kind of rests there. Tuck your motor connections back there. And then you're going to take your two number 14 rubber bands and you're going to put one across the front of the solar panel and the other one you're going to take it and put it along the middle of the solar panel and the chassis. After you put your solar panel on your chassis, you can take your completed ray catcher outside and connect the alligator clips from the solar panel to the motor and watch your ray catcher go. Let's set and go, little man. And that's all I have for you today. For more ray catcher videos like activities and real world connections, check out our website at pitsco.com.